We were at the shop, I got a call, and this guy has a seat. It's an amphibious Jeep, which means you can drive it straight into the water and it becomes a boat. Hey, how's it going? Hi, Rick David. Nice to meet you. Corey. Corey. So we got a boat car. This thing is clean. Wow. It's pretty sweet. Very rarely do you see a car that needs an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to sell my amphibious Jeep. The amphibious GPA is probably the most rare amphibian there is, so I spent extra time and care with it and spent around 3,000 hours in the restoration. Where did you find this amazing thing? In a barn in Wisconsin. I'm glad to report that I was able to restore this back to factory condition. These things just always make me laugh. I mean, I'd rather have a really good boat and a really good Jeep. Well, the fact of the matter is, though, literally, you could almost go anywhere on this thing. Even just high water in a stream or something like that would knock a Jeep out. This thing could go right through it. This thing could go across a lake. This would get you there, but just not as fast, right? That's correct. What it's primarily was used for was a reconnaissance vehicle because it could go so many places and being 12 volt, which was very unique during World War II, it was an ideal radio jeep. So do you gotta register this thing as a boat and a car? I do have it registered as a boat and a car. It has two titles, and it's legal to go onto the road or in the water. So where's the prop on this thing? The prop is in the back. There's the uh, propeller and the rudder. It's kind of neat to be behind a GPA on the road because when I turn the wheels on dry land, the rudder turns. <laughs> it, it's almost like a uh, hand signal. I have a few customers that might be interested in this thing. Who? I know people, all right? Who do you know that collects boat cars? I know people collect military stuff, all right? These are just incredibly rare, and to actually find one completely restored in working condition is amazing. It really is. So how much you want for this thing? $240,000. I mean, it's cool for a boat car, but that's Ferrari money. <laughs> <laughs> Let me call someone to come out here and take a look at this. Sure. I mean, if there's money to be made, I'm interested. OK. Wow. I've seen three of these in my life. One's at the Smithsonian. Other ones at the World War II Museum in New Orleans, and I saw one last summer in England, but never been restored, and it sold for $100,000. So is it all original? It's all original, the way it rolled out of the factory November 4th of 42. So for a collector, this is really the pinnacle. As you can see, this is a steel hull. It is very heavy. I mean, I really dig the thing. I'm just afraid of, I'm afraid of sinking. <laughs> The Seep is rated to carry 500 pounds. The four of us are a little bit more than that. And since Alex and Corey are slightly less than real men, looks like me and the seller are going to go take it out in the lake. So you have taken it in the water before, right? <laughs> first time. It's first time for everything. <laughs> that actually goes faster than I thought it would. Yeah. I am actually shocked on this thing. We take it out on the lake. It actually has a little bit of get up and go. That's a real boat. The thing is cool. That's awesome. I can't tell you how impressed I was when he just, just drove it right out of the lake. I mean, that was a steep hill. It was muddy, and it flew right through it. That was sweet. It like monster trucked out of the lake. It was awesome. So Alex, what do you think this thing would go for? It may be the only one in the world that can actually function as a boat and swim. So based on that, I think you could get 225000 for it. OK, man, thanks. This vehicle is a collector's dream. It is in mint condition, and it's incredibly rare. If Rick can get this for the right price, this is like banner headline type of piece for the shop. I mean, what will you realistically take for it? Uh, 240 I think, is realistic. I think that. Your expert was a little bit low. These always go up in value. So you wouldn't take like 180 for it? No, no, no. I don't think you could restore one for 180,000. Yeah, it's just I'm just looking at it as a business standpoint. You know what I mean? Change your mind. 180. Um, 180. I'll keep that in mind. It was nice. Thanks for the ride, though, dude. Oh, it was that's fun. A, that's, that's amazing. Now you can cross it off your bucket list that you rode in a seat.
I wasn't able to make a deal today. I believe the price is too low. But I was able to give Rick the most legal fun he's had in a long time. I'm out on the East Coast. I'm trying to find some unique items for the shop. And today, I'm looking at a completely original 1944 Willys Army Jeep. From what I've been told, this Jeep has all the original parts. It's completely stock. And apparently, the test drive is going to be really fun. <laughs> How's it going? It's going well, man. How are you? I'm Rick. TC, nice to meet you. So this is the Willys Jeep? Yeah, this is the 1944 Willys Jeep. It's been pretty much fully restored. It's in great shape. Runs awesome. They made them so they're really simple, really reliable. They're four-wheel drive, so they'd basically go anywhere. And they tried to make them GI-proof, but I don't think anything's actually GI-proof. <laughs> <laughs> I called Rick to come take a look at my 1944 Willys Jeep. I'm selling the Jeep now because I just bought a house, and I'm starting a family, and I really just don't have any room for it. This is incredible. And it's a Willys, too, which is really cool. Most people don't realize that originally there wasn't a company called Jeep. The whole Jeep name sort of happened, and there's a few different theories on it. The one theory I like the best is Popeye actually had this invisible magic dog <laughs> in some of his episodes, and his name was Jeep. Oh, wow. And thing was, like, indestructible. It could do, like, anything. And then the other theory is it was the general purpose vehicle, the GP. OK. Which sort of translates into Jeep. That makes sense. They were incredible vehicles for their time. And after the war, everyone that was in the Army that drove these things around loved them. So Willie started making civilian models, and uh, they did well. But Willie's ended up changing hands so many times. And eventually, it was bought out by American Motors, and they just dropped the whole Willie's name completely. And it was just the Jeep. You know, it's sort of been an icon ever since World War II. I mean, it's got a really short wheelbase. It's got four-wheel drive. As long as you don't plan on going really fast, you can get over just about anything. Yeah. I have a 1973 CJ5, and it's not freeway friendly. <laughs> <laughs> so where did you get this thing? I actually got it off a buddy of mine who was a Marine. He fully restored it. God, it looks in great shape. And everything's stock underneath the hood? Yeah, it's got all the uh, original parts. I'm pretty impressed, actually. I mean, it's in really good shape. Because usually these things were so bastardized, it was unbelievable. So many guys bought surplus Jeeps from World War II, and then they tried to customize them, and then a lot of them just tried to keep running with, you know, bubble gum and duct tape. Right. So it's rare you find them that are completely original like this. Yeah, it's pretty stock. So how much are you looking to get out of it? Well, I was thinking 25. Does the gun come with it? Uh, sure. Why not? <laughs> OK. I have a buddy that's like an hour from here, and he would know a lot more about this than me. Do you mind if I get him down here to take a look at it? Sure. All right. I'm actually glad that there's an expert coming to look at this Jeep, because I know it's in very good condition, and I think Rick's going to buy it. Wow. This thing is gorgeous. What year is it? 1944. All right. So in July 1940, the US Army sees that they're probably going to get pulled into World War II. They realized they needed a sort of all-purpose utility vehicle that was four-wheel drive. Willys was actually granted the first contract. The cool thing is, Willys goes on to start making the CJ series, the civilian Jeep series. And really, the Jeeps that are made today are very recognizable, having this been their sort of grandfather. And the design really hasn't changed all that much. So. The thing I need to do is basically establish how original this is. The more original parts, the more valuable it is. OK. The biggest thing I look for on a Willys is right here is a data plate. The serial number is consistent with 1944. So no question that the body or the tub and the frame are original 1944. That is great. The next thing we need to do is check the engine. Can you help me pop this? Sure. Well, I don't have to look that hard. That is a post-war engine. A CJ engine from the 1940s, which is very popular to do with these Jeeps. They're a little bit more reliable, but for a collector purist, they want a World War II engine. OK. It's still a gorgeous Jeep. And I think, actually, the last thing we need to do is. You guys want to take it for a spin? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I've even got some helmets for you. I'm good. Safety first, Rick. I don't consider that a safe helmet. <laughs> there we go. All right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a Cadillac. <laughs> yeah. This is so awesome. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. That was cool. <laughs> I got to admit, I'm, I'm deeply impressed. 
TC, thank you so much. Sure. That was so fun. Sure. <laughs> so I'm assuming it runs perfect. It runs perfect. It handled everything it was supposed to handle. So what do you think it's worth? I think you could get 25000 for it, Rick. Thanks, man. You're welcome. I think this is a great buy because it appeals to Jeep collectors and military collectors, so it's a broader base. All right, so uh, what's your best price on it? Well, I was hoping to get 25. You take 18? Uh, I can't go that low, man. I can come down, but not that far. Uh, 23? How about 19 grand? I'm going to have expenses. I got to ship this thing back to the West Coast. I don't know if I can go that low. Uh, I don't, 22. I'll make it plain and simple. I'll give you 20 grand. It's more than a fair price. Uh, all right, 20. Sweet. Let's go do some paperwork <laughs> and right. uh, I get this thing shipped to Vegas. Cool. I decided to take the 20,000 because I really just need this Jeep gone. I'm going to take the money and put an addition on the back of my house. Earlier today, we got a call about a 1970s CJ Jeep. So me and the old man are on our way to go check it out. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Hey, you guys. I'm assuming this is it? Yep, that's it. So you got the bar in there still? <laughs> I called the guys from the pawn shop to see if they'd be interested in buying my 1973 CJ5. I bought it online about six years ago. Idea was to restore it, but I think it's pretty obvious I'm never gonna finish it, so it's time to sell it. Tell me everything you can about it. I always wanted a Jeep. I got it for a good price because it was in very bad shape. I threw the body away, so it's a fiberglass tub, hood, and fenders. Mm -hmm. um, I had it all the way off, of course, to the frame, and I rebuilt the engine and the transmission. I put new leaf springs on it all the way around, a new gas tank. How can we never finish it? Well, uh, lose interest in it. Okay. Never seem to have any time. Yeah, welcome to the club. Jeeps are great. They're what everybody in the military drove back in the day. They were known to be as tough as nails. Did you start it up for me, man? Yeah. Fired right up, didn't it? I mean, the engine sounds great. There's no, you know, it's not rattling around in there. You put some work into it, I'll say that for a fact. This thing looks to be about halfway done to me, but it still needs a lot of work. I don't mind spending the money, but I don't want to get stuck into a money pit. What you trying to do, guy? I was just trying to sell it. How much are you looking to get out of it? $2,500. 2500 I think it's worth that because the body is brand new and the motor has no time on it. Problem is, Corey, is it's a work in progress. We don't know what it's gonna cost to finish it up. I gotta say, man, my comfort level's around 1500 bucks. Yeah. Can I get uh, 2000 out of it? I wish I could, man. I mean, there's a lot of work here, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's the, the parts alone are worth more than that. I'll do 1800. How about 19? 1800 if you want it, man. That's the best I can do. Every time we buy a car, there's a risk. If one thing goes wrong, we could lose everything. So we have to protect ourselves by buying low. It's all about limiting any possibility of getting burned. All right, 1800. All right, my man, deal. I'm kind of sad that I've gotten rid of it because it is a fun little Jeep and it would have been great had I finished it. And I'll miss it, but I'll get over it. What's up, gentlemen? What have we got, man? Well, I know you're not a Jeep guy. True. But you're going to have to be my Jeep guy this time. <laughs> all right, all right. I can do it. We can do Jeeps. I own Counts Customs right here in Las Vegas where we build wicked, wicked choppers, crazy hot rods, and work on people's cool projects. What year is it? 73. 73. All right. The old Jeeps, man, they were just tough, rugged, not a lot of amenities, not a lot of luxury, but they'll go anywhere and do anything. This one's nice. I mean, somebody obviously put a brand new body on it, and this is a really nice body. Usually, you know, a fiberglass body is kind of flimsy, but this one is really thick, yeah. so this is going to yeah. be a pleasure to work on. I'm thinking what we do with it is we do like a camo, but not a silly, cheesy camo. Maybe we throw some speakers back here. Corey, just fix it up basic. Paint it jet black, indoor, outdoor carpet. See what, not jet black, not camo, but let's do like an army green on it. Okay. You know yeah, now that's, 
Is that cool? That'll, that'll work. Maybe we'll do a little army touches to them that have some yeah. have some cool guy flavor yeah. to them. All right. That would look nice, man. Yeah. How much did you pay for it? What are you into it? 1800 Okay. There's, there's a lot here. And uh, so we'll see what all's missing and we can figure out what it's going to take. Give me an idea of what we're talking. Well, Corey, you said it best at first that, you know, I'm, I'm not a Jeep guy. So, if, you know, fair warning, I just want to, you know, be honest and tell you that I'm going to need to spend a little bit of time with it and come up with a real parts list so I can give you a real answer. Is that cool? That sounds like a plan. Okay. So let's do it. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you. it. Absolutely. We'll make this happen. Take care, buddy. Absolutely, brother. We'll see you guys soon. All right, my man. I know the Jeep's definitely going to look awesome, but I can't guarantee that the price is going to be all that awesome for him just yet. I'm excited to see this. I just really hope Danny didn't go overboard on it. I hope he didn't spend too much goddamn money. Shut up, Rick. We'll spend what we have to spend. This looks like it's right out of the movies. That's what we like to do for you, brother. I like it. I'm glad you dig it. Well, you remember when you guys brought it down, it was basically a body sitting on a chassis. What we wanted to do was kind of a fun toy, but it kind of gives a tribute to an Army Jeep flavor. It's got a sporty look to it. Absolutely. Custom made the bumpers front and rear, all the lighting on it. Custom made the, the windshield mounts. Built a whole new dash for it. Put a stereo in it. It's her first Jeep, so I'm, I'm really proud of it. I'm happy we came out. Like, every time I give you a few ideas, it's like you jump inside my head and do exactly what I was thinking. It's scary inside Corey's head sometimes, but oh, still, yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, it looks great. I mean, I, I really like it, so how much it cost? <laughs> Don't worry about it, Count. He's just a tight ass at times. <laughs> no, I want to know how much it costs. I don't, think, I don't think it was all that much. Yeah, you know, I mean, you guys, what, picked it up for 1800 we started with, right? Yeah. And I think we're like 55 in it. I wouldn't worry too bad. So, okay. you know, you, I definitely think you're gonna make money on this. As usual, the count outdid himself. I mean, even though I'm 7,300 bucks in the hole, I should be able to sell this thing for 15K easy. Sounds like a pretty good profit margin to me. All right, Sean, let's drive this back to the shop, man. Ain't no Wait, come back here. What are you talking about? You'll take a detour to the desert. I know you. It's got to be tested out. Man, the old man will take it back. We got to test it Rick, out. Do you agree with? Yes, I agree. Let's go. Let's go, Pop. Come on. Man, man, you guys want to drive? You can back. drive in the back. Okay. This is my project. Big Hoss gets screwed again. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Pretty good. What do you have here? Bought in Gumby and Pokey today in their uh, famous tin Jeep. Okay. That's not a Poke Bowl. <laughs> I'm here at the pawn shop today to sell my Gumby and Pokey Jeep and characters. I picked up my Gumby and Pokey Jeep at a garage sale one day when I was out carousing around. I've had the Gumby and Pokey Jeep now for probably about five years. I was sitting on a shelf in one of my bedrooms. I'm hoping to get about $150 today. This is cool. Gumby was a real simple cartoon, and Gumby and Pokey would go on these crazy adventures, do weird stuff. They had a Jeep exactly like this. They'd ride around in with it. Look, the Jeep even has a little slit for yep. Pokey's tail and his feet. And, I mean, I think Gumby should have one hand on the steering wheel, but this represents uh, the cartoon pretty good. You know, it was claymation. They would make Gumby and Pokey out of clay, and they would pose them in different poses take thousands of snapshots and put them all together to make this, you know, episode of Gumby. What do you know about it? Well, I remember watching it when I was a kid. Um, in the 60s, I think it was on like Sunday mornings. I remember him driving around the Jeep, going on little adventures. I saw the documentary on Art Cloakley, and I guess he's the one that created him. And he got his inspiration from playing with clay in his grandparents' backyard. And he originally stamped him out of a gingerbread man cookie cutter thing and didn't like the shape, so he kind of formed it. All right, so what are you looking to do with these? Well, I'm looking to sell them. Um, I was hoping to maybe get about $150 for, the, for, for everything. Well, do you mind if I have a buddy of mine come down and take a look at it? No, I don't mind. I... You want to give Steve a call and see if he wants to come across the street? You're pokey. Why don't you do it? <sighs> Fine, man. I'll give him a call. <laughs> I'm obviously Gumby. <laughs> I have no problem with having an expert come in and take a look at it today. I'm, I'm 
hoping that he verifies what I think the uh, items are worth. I figured you got to know something about Gumby, right? <laughs> It's in the bottom of every kid's toy box in America. <laughs> Gumby has been around, it seems like, forever. The Gumby line is kind of influential in the toy world because the functioning of the toy. You know, nowadays, kids want articulated action figures. They want the wrists that move, the hands that move. Gumby kind of, like, kicked that off using the wired body technology. Uh, it's really cool. Can I take a look at some of the pieces here? Absolutely. The figures overall, you know, standard wear, it looks like there's a little bit of separation on Pokey's tail here. That's pretty common. Um, Gumby looks like he's been played with a little bit. But over time, they've changed the actual plastic that was on there. So this rubber being a little more spongy is actually a good thing. They're a lot stiffer now because they wanted to hold poses a little bit better. And then you have the lithograph Jeep. This is really the cool piece that's on the counter because this is the tin version and it's in very good condition for its age. You know, you're talking, this item came out around 1966 or so. So you're looking at, you know, an item that's been around for over 50 years. So for the entire collection, what do you think it'd be worth? So there's a collector out there for stuff that's gonna be in, specifically this Jeep. Overall, the condition of the Jeep is really nice. There's some you know, standard wear on Gumby and Pokey themselves. But I think you'd have no problem getting $250 for it. Wow. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. All right. All right. See you next right. time. Thank you so much. So you still want 150 for it? Well, <laughs> I wish I uh, had asked a little more after hearing the expert, but I asked for 150 and that's what I'm willing to take for it. All right, well, you got a deal. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Come with me. We got to do some paperwork. Okay, okay. Get to work, Corey. That's right, it's Gumby's town.